Hi. Today we're going to be upgrading this Vestax PDX2000 DJ turntable to PDX3000 specification. This gives it torque adjustment, better motor control and most importantly MIDI support. And all this for much less than the silly prices that used PDX3000s are going for these days. Let's get started. This video is brought to you by PCBWay who provided the circuit boards for this project. More about them later. Now, I'm going to go into a lot of detail about Vestax turntables and how this mod works, so if you just want the mod guide, just skip to this time for the TLDR version. But for the rest of you, let's start with the basics. Chances are, even the non-DJs in my audience know what a turntable is, even if they've never actually used one. You may even have heard of the Technics SL1200, which was for 30 years the undisputed king of DJ turntables. But the company that came closest to toppling Technics crown was Vestax with their PDX range. After a few slightly ropey attempts in the late 90s, Vestax really hit their stride in the 2000s with the PDX2000, which was by all accounts a fantastic turntable. It has a huge pitch range, a strong motor with loads of torque, and a straight tone arm to stop skipping at the debatable expense of sound quality. They quickly became a favourite of Scratch DJs especially, and they were a very common sight at DJ battles, or at least the ones not sponsored by Technics. DJs started experimenting with using the extended pitch controls for melodic purposes, and Vestax eventually incorporated MIDI support into the later PDX3000 to allow note-perfect pitch control. This, along with improvements to the motor control firmware, have led some people to consider the PDX3000 to be the best DJ turntable of all time, and I certainly don't think that's an unreasonable claim. Unfortunately, the 3000 was released not long before Vestax went bankrupt in 2014, and is therefore much more rare than the 2000. So what do you do if you want MIDI support on your PDX2000? Well, in 2013, my good friend DJ Backtrack designed a modification for the PDX2000 that gives it a MIDI import just like the PDX3000. It's an extremely clever device that works really well, but Backtrack and I have long theorised that there was a simpler way of adding MIDI support to the PDX2000. So a little while later, we started studying Vestax service manuals for clues. We noticed that 99% of the electronics in the PDX3000 are identical to the PDX2000. The only real difference is that the 3000 uses a slightly upgraded microcontroller chip. This chip controls every aspect of the turntable, the motor, the buttons, the lights, everything. And on the PDX3000 it even handles the MIDI input. The chip in question is still widely and cheaply available from component suppliers even today. This begged the question, could we upgrade the 2000 to a 3000 by simply swapping out that chip? Now, unfortunately there is a catch, and that's that the chip comes blank from the factory. In addition to swapping it out, we'd also have to program it with the code from the PDX3000's microcontroller. And how are we going to get that? Well, I'm lucky enough to own two PDX3000s, so Backtrack and I set about doing some research to see if there was a way to extract the code from the pdx 3000s chip. Now, typically, microcontrollers have a port that is used to program them in the factory. On the PDX, this port is accessed via this unused connector on the main PCB. Very often, this port can also be used to read the code out of it again. However, the chip in the PDX3000, the Renesas H8, has no way that I know of to read the code out of the programming port. So we put the project on hold and Backtrack continued to sell an improved version of his MIDI mod. Fast forward to the year 2021. Backtrack suggested we have another go at finding a way to dump the PDX3000 code, and while I was chatting to him about it, I decided to have another quick look at the datasheet for the microcontroller. I came across a section for some reason I'd never noticed before, the flash memory prom mode. This describes an alternative way of programming the microcontroller by connecting it to a standard ROM programmer such as this cheap one that I seem to use in all my videos. Now the manual doesn't expressly say this, but it occurred to me that if we can program the chip using this method, maybe we can read the code the same way. Now, the way you're supposed to use this alternative programming mode is by buying an adapter to connect the microcontroller to a ROM programmer, but I didn't fancy spending £200 on something that might not work anyway, so I spent a few hours building this ridiculous adapter myself using a surface mount prototyping board. I then desoldered the chip from a spare PDX2000 circuit board, soldered it to my adapter and tried to read the ROM. After a little bit of fiddling with voltage levels and reset circuits, it successfully read the data. I checked it against the microcontroller's manual to make sure it looked like valid program code, and it was! This was fantastic news, and I quickly set about desoldering the microcontroller from one of my precious PDX3000s to see if I could get that to read as well. I got completely valid code, and there was even a lovely greeting from a Vestax engineer at the end of the data. Shout out to them if they're watching. Next it was time to test if the PDX3000 chip would work on a PDX2000 PCB, and as the two chips are virtually identical, the only changes that need to be made were to cut one trace on the underside of the PCB and replace the 16MHz crystal with a 25MHz one. 
I soldered the PDX3000 chip onto the PDX2000 and fired up the turntable. It seemed to work perfectly and had one interesting side effect. The start speed adjustment knob instead adjusted the torque of the turntable, just like the equivalent knob on the PDX3000. This proves that we were running PDX3000 code on the PDX2000. So I ordered a few blank chips from UT Source, and while waiting for them to arrive, started on with the next stage of the project, adding a MIDI port. The PDX3000 has the MIDI port on its rear plate, and it's attached to this little circuit board that has the required MIDI interface circuitry. Obviously the PDX2000 doesn't have this board, so I designed an equivalent replacement board and ordered it from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. I've uploaded the PCB design to PCBWay's shared projects section, so you can order it really easily. They have a deal on where you get $5 off your first order, basically making it free, you just pay shipping. You can also get boards pre-assembled for as little as $30 if you don't fancy soldering it yourself. And they also do 3D printing and CNC machining, so if you have some projects that need enclosures or panels made, then check them out. They've always done amazing work on my projects. Less than a week later, I had my MIDI input boards, and they look really great. Thanks again to PCBWay for providing them. There was, however, still one problem to overcome, and that's connecting the MIDI port to the chip. You see, the PDX3000's microcontroller takes MIDI input on pin 14, and on the PDX2000 that pin isn't wired to anything. So in order to connect a MIDI input, I had to solder a tiny wire directly onto pin 14 of the chip. This worked perfectly well, and I was ecstatic to see MIDI working great on a PDX2000, but it isn't a very elegant solution, and I was worried about long-term stability, so I went looking for another solution to this problem. Now, pin 14 is marked RxD0, which means it can accept serial data such as MIDI commands. But as you can see, it's not the only serial port on the microcontroller. There's also pin 15, or RxD1. RxD1 is connected to this port on the PDX2000's main circuit board, which is the programming port we talked about earlier and so normally has nothing connected to it. So if we can persuade the microcontroller to use RxD1 for MIDI instead of RxD0, then we can simply connect the MIDI in port to the unused programming connector. This would be much easier and more reliable than that dodgy soldering job I did earlier. But how can we tell it to receive MIDI on pin 15 instead of pin 14? Well, we'll need to go poking around the microcontroller code for that. The datasheet is the place to start here. In the serial comms section, you can see that there are two sets of serial port memory addresses, one set corresponding to RxD0 and one corresponding to RxD1. These are registers that tell the serial ports how to operate. Exactly what these do is pretty much irrelevant. We should just be able to find and replace each of these registers with their corresponding register in the other RxD, and this will make the code use the other serial port. So I got my favourite hex editor out and did just that. Once I'd made all these changes, I made up a cable to connect my replica MIDI port board to the unused connector on the main PCB, connected everything together and to a MIDI keyboard, and fired everything up. It works! So now we know the technical details of how the mod works, let's install it in a stock PDX2000. And welcome back everyone who skipped the technical details, you guys really missed out I tell you. The first thing you need to do is read the description of this video below. This mod is in its early stages and I'll almost certainly have some updated information soon. Another thing to note is that this mod is, at the time of recording, only tested on the original PDX2000 Mark 1, not the Mark 2 or the PDX2300. However, the Mark 2 version might actually be easier to mod, as it already has the same microcontroller as the PDX3000, so you should be able to skip that step later on. Once I've had a chance to test these later models, I'll update the video description with more information. But until then, I wouldn't risk trying it on anything except the PDX2000 Mark 1. By the way, if you're willing to lend me the circuit board from a PDX2000 Mark II or a PDX2300 Mark I or II, then I'll upgrade your PDX for you for free as well, so just get in touch, I'll give you the contact details in the video description. Anyway, now we need to gather parts, and I've given you a link below to the list, but I'll just quickly go over everything. Most importantly, we need the new microcontroller. It is discontinued, but there's plenty of new old stock available from places like UT Source. Next, we need the MIDI input board I designed. You can order the circuit from PCBWay, I'll give you a link below, and the components from pretty much any electronic supplier. I like Mauser just now, but this will vary by country. We'll also need connectors to connect the PDX's main board to the input board. The connectors are in the JST-PH range, and we need a 3-pin one and an 8-pin one. Finally, we need some wires to attach the connectors together. You can make these yourself using standard 32 to 24 AWG wire and a cheap knockoff crimping tool, but I managed to buy some pre-crimped wires on AliExpress, which is much easier. Anyway, let's get on with it. 
To dismantle a PDX, I recommend you remove the platter first, as it can be easy to damage the spindle otherwise. Put a cushion down and then put the turntable upside down on top of it. Remove the 14 screws on the bottom plate and put it to one side. Find the main PCB, detach all the cables from it, remove its screws and then remove it from the case. You'll also have to remove this rear plate, and to get at its screws you have to detach this input board from it by unscrewing the screws at the rear. Then the plate unscrews nice and easy. Before we do anything else, we'll need to cut this trace underneath the board to disconnect pin one of the microcontroller from VCC. This is a requirement of the new chip. If you don't do this, it could possibly blow it, so make sure you get it completely detached. Next, we need to replace this microcontroller chip in the middle. As I said earlier, I think this step won't be necessary if you have a PDX2000 Mark II, but check the video description for more information about that. Replacing it isn't too hard if you're accustomed to surface mount electronics rework, but this is not a good project for someone learning to solder. Do not attempt this unless you're fairly confident in your soldering and desoldering skills. Hopefully some people will start offering chip replacement services though. Let me know if you want to advertise your services and I'll put a link in the video description. All that said though, here's what I do. Cover all the nearby components in captain tape to stop them flying off. Apply flux to all the pins of the chip and set your hot air rework tool to maybe 280 degrees C. Move the rework tool around the perimeter of the chip while occasionally trying to lift it with a pair of tweezers. Don't apply any real force to the tweezers. If it won't come off gently, then you have more heating to do. It takes about 30 to 60 seconds to get the board hot enough. Then, once it starts to move, gently lift it and place it to one side. Now clean the old flux off with isopropyl alcohol, then apply more flux to the pads. Using solder braid, remove the excess solder from the pads by dabbing them. Never drag the braid between pins as you'll tear the pads off. Clean the old flux off and then apply some more. Now take the new chip and place it as accurately as you can on the board. Pin 1 is next to the corner that's been slightly beveled and goes alongside the white dot on the board. Melt a tiny blob of solder onto your iron and use it to tack down a couple of pins on opposite corners. Now come back and flow the solder onto the pins a bunch at a time, adding more to the iron where necessary and adding more flux and dabbing with a clean iron to clear up any shorted pins. When you're done, clean the old flux off again. We also have to replace the 16 MHz crystal with a 25 MHz one, and that is done in very much the same way, but I would apply the solder directly to the pads instead of via the iron, as the pads are much bigger and suit a more traditional soldering style. Now we need to prepare the MIDI input board. It's a pretty easy board to solder together, certainly easier than the microcontroller rework. I'll give you the bill of materials in the video description so you know which part goes where. We also have to make up the cable to connect it to the PDX mainboard. To insert a wire into the connector, just make sure it's this way up and then just push it in. Now we have to program the new chip, and for that we'll need one of these USB to serial adapters, which you can get on eBay for a couple of quid. We also need to make a temporary programming cable to connect it to the main PCB. Here's the wiring for it. When I made my cable, I modified some of these DuPont style wires and crimp JST connectors onto it, but you could sacrifice some pre-crimped wires if you don't have a crimping tool. Connect the USB adapter to your computer and install the Renesas flashing tools. I'll give you a link below as well as the instructions on how to use it. Okay, let's get installing. First, let's drill some holes in the rear plate for the MIDI input. If you compare the PDX2000 and PDX3000 plates, you can see that the largest hole needs to go about here, just above the CE mark, on European models at least. Check the video description for a printable drill template. I used the cheapest cordless drill and cone bit I could find, and that worked just fine. The MIDI input board just screws in like so, and then you should attach the cable because it'll be tricky to get at later. Reinstall the rear plate. Now screw the main PCB back in and attach all the connectors, including the one from the MIDI board, which goes in here. Probably a good idea to test it before reassembling the PDX fully. Be careful when connecting power to the turntable with the bottom plate off, though you can get a shock if you touch the transformer board. Firstly, I'd just turn it on and make sure the buttons and lights are working and that the motor is turning. If it doesn't even get that far, then recheck all your connections and check your solder joints. To check the MIDI input, connect it to any MIDI controller that can send notes around middle C. I use this enormous 88 key keyboard. To enable MIDI mode, you press the 33 and 45 buttons at the same time. Then play some notes and watch the platter change speed. All right, that's it. All that's left to do now is reattach the bottom plate and start having fun with your new PDX 3000. So that's pretty much it for this video. I'd just like to say thanks to DJ Backtrack for all the help and encouragement over the years. I definitely wouldn't have been able to do this project without him. I've always got weird little projects like this going on, so if you want to see more, please do the thumbs up subscription notification thing. Thanks so much for watching, and catch you next time!